Let's talk about the game of tug of war. If you have been to sports events, probably on your school sports day, this has been a commonly played game. It is just a game that composes of either two individuals or two teams that go and stand on either side of this rope. We have a referee in the middle of the rope and these people are supposed to pull the rope. The two teams or the two individuals are supposed to pull this rope in opposite directions and the winner takes the day. So all players on either side will pull the rope as hard as they can. My emphasis here is that both sides of the team are imposing a certain amount of force on the rope. However, at the end of the day, it is the side that is able to pull the rope from the other team that wins the game. When a team wins the game, it simply means that the force they used to pull the rope was so great that it overpowered the force of the opposing team, thereby enabling them to pull the rope to their side. Now let's assume we have team A and then we have team B. Team A uses a thousand newton force and team B pulls the rope with 1,200 newton force. Since team B is using a greater force, this greater force will have to first cancel out the 1,000 newton force that is being used by the opposing team. When this happens, the excess force, which is 200 newtons, is what enables team B to pull the rope to their side. This excess force is what we call the resultant force. And so by definition, the resultant force is the net force that replaces the effect of the original forces on the particle's motion. Or you can say that the force that is left over after equal but opposite forces have cancelled out is what we call the resultant force. And so that's it with the definition and explanation of the resultant force. In our next session, we shall be doing a few calculations that relate to the resultant force. Arnold Ramakuramia is my name and this is Kisengu Academy.